also for them in the long run. Yes, with, uh, with regards to addictions, uh, that's why I, I started my question uh, by saying that I think I'm seeking some of your approval is because I actually, uh, I thought I went to uh, quite great lengths to actually work on my addictions because I mm -hmm. went twice to the desert two weeks on my own without food, uh, cigarette, coffee and means of communication yeah. just to fight my addictions. As a result, I, I gave up smoking and drinking coffee, so yeah. uh, half of my addictions, let's say. No, no, that's not half of your addictions. No, uh, I mean, the ones that In I... In fact, because to be I, honest I with had you... I had set myself the goal of food, uh, yeah. computer... Smoking and coffee. Yeah. So now, I what you've just smoking listed, and coffee. but what you've just listed is all your physical addictions. Yes, absolutely. At least to start with that. With well, the, they mean the almost nothing in comparison to your emotional addictions. Your emotional addictions are much higher and greater than your physical addictions. In fact, all of your physical addictions are driven by your emotional addictions. So when you remove a physical addiction, while you may feel like you've addressed the issue, you haven't actually addressed the issue yet. You only can address the issue by addressing the emotion that drove the physical addiction. That's why I went to the desert and I thought, I won't eat, so I'll see what it feels like being very hungry and very angry about it. <laughs> so, well, I, I worked a lot in the desert. I mean, lots of fear and shame and stuff came up. And I was, and as I good. had nothing else to do because I was on my own virtually, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I worked on that all the time, yeah. twice. So it was now almost I need to, a month. I need to know. stop you. Yeah. Because can you feel your anger at me even just saying that to you? Because I can. I'm not telling you that I'm through, but I'm just trying to, with regards to, to this joy and pleasure, because after that, I received, I thought I received some very some nice up. answers yep. to my questions, and yep. now I'm doubting that I, they were any answers at all. Oh, I agree, I would doubt. I would doubt that they were any answers at all. Because you still have the emotional addictions in place. And while those emotional addictions in place, that's the focus. That you, the spirits all work on your emotional addictions. That's what they're focused on. They see them as colours coming out of your spirit form that they can manipulate and control because they know that you will be manipulated and controlled by certain things. And it's interesting that when I point that out to you, the first feeling you have is anger, which you still have if you're honest with yourself right as I'm speaking. And this is, the, this is telling you that there are underlying fears that you have that you've yet to even go near and face. And you want it to all be over in a few weeks. No, no, that's not true. No, it is. No, I, I'm not, no, it's no, not no, a question. Because I, know, I know that I've got heaps of anger still and heaps mm -hmm. of fears, but at least what I thought I had achieved at least something because I thought that w what I had done was... Mm, Compared to nothing, quite a lot. Well, compared to nothing, it possibly was quite a lot. But there is a long way to go. What a lot of people don't realise is that... If you, how long have you been alive now? 40 plus years. You're not going to tell me exactly? 41. 41, OK. So 41 years you've been alive. Over that period of time, how many thousands of, of emotions do you think you've suppressed? All of them. All of them, pretty much, right? The majority of us in the Western world in particular have suppressed the majority of our emotions. And that began from the time that we were just little children. Our parents suppressed them and tried to control them and manipulated them and so forth. You've got 41 years of suppressed emotions to feel. Because they're all within you and the only way they're going to get out of you is by feeling them. Right? Now, 41 years of suppressed emotions, assuming, let's say we suppressed one emotion a week. Shall we make that assumption? And usually it's a lot more than that that we suppress. But let's say it's one emotion a week. One, so it's 41 by 52 right? emotions. That's over 2,000, yes? Emotions that we're going to have to feel to the depth that we didn't feel them before. Now, you're not going to accomplish that in one week, two week, five week, one year, it's very highly unlikely you will accomplish it in a year, two years, three years. You might accomplish it in 10 or 15 years, perhaps. 
And in fact, it is possible to accomplish it in 10 years or so if you really dedicate in addressing the issue emotionally. But you're not going to accomplish it in two weeks in the desert. That's the reality. But many of us want to have... We want to believe that the reality is we should be able to. And then we, what happens is we get angry with God and we get angry with the people who told us we should deal with our emotions and we get angry with pretty much anyone we can get angry with because we want it to be over. And wanting something to be over is not conducive to helping you deal with things emotionally. So we need to uh, come to accept that we have a unique experience. You have a unique experience. It's only yours. You have 41 years times by how many emotions you suppressed every single week of those years to feel now as a result of what happened. And being angry about it is not going to help you feel them. What's going to help you feel them is, is having a lot more love for yourself than forcing yourself to go out in the desert to deal with an emotion and caring for yourself enough to, to be willing to accept every single one of these emotions. Emotionally accept every single one of them and accept that every single one of them is either the result of somebody else's actions towards yourself or your choices that were out of harmony with will out of harmony with the loving use of your will. And some of those, so some of the things have happened to you because of what other people did, in other words, and some of the things happened because of what you did in terms of the choices you made in your life. And all of them are going to have to be felt to the emotional causal level for them to be released. And that is not going to happen in a day or a week or, or, or a month or a year or probably even 10 years for most people who are living on Earth. It can happen in a shorter period of time, but it's unlikely for most people because there's so much resistance inside of us. So every time you get angry, you're in resistance. Does that make sense? And that resistance stops you from actually feeling the underlying emotion. Now, you can express the, you, you can go and express the anger and everything, but at some point in the future, you'll come to realize that actually all this anger is because I'm actually addicted to, to avoiding my fear and it's my fear that I have to feel in the end and most of us are so like terrified of feeling fear that we'd rather be angry than feel fear because anger is a powerful place it feels powerful right it makes us feel strong but fear makes us feel weak and so we want to avoid fear like, like the plague. We want to avoid it. We want to, that's the last thing we wish to do. And if, if you can understand that through your childhood in particular, but also all through your life, you've had so many fears that you've acted upon, you've now you know, made decisions about them and so forth. And every single one of these things have compounded. And the spirits around you know how much you want to avoid it. And so what they do is they feed you things that, that you accept. Now, in the prayer, you know the Lord's Prayer that's in the Paget Messages, not the one that's in the Bible, but the one that we listed on our website that's in the Paget Messages. In the prayer, there's a section about spirit influence, about avoiding the control and manipulation of spirits. Many of us don't wish to avoid it because we are so focused on wanting pleasure that as soon as we have a moment of pleasure in our life, we go to that thing without considering its long-term ethical stance, what, what's really going on. In other words, we refuse to consider what's really going on. We don't want to know most of the time. And so what we do is we take unethical decisions at that point, feeding our joy, describing to ourselves and saying to ourselves, actually... Um, I'm doing this because it's bringing me joy and, and you know that's the right thing to do. When the reality is, if we looked at the ethics involved with many of our choices and decisions, we would find that they are unloving. And this applies to ethics even with yourself. So when you went out in the desert for two weeks, you weren't being loving to yourself. Does that make sense? Because you're being hard on yourself. You're forcing yourself through things that you don't want to address. And... And so, of course, you're not going to get to the real causes. You're only going to deal with superficial issues like that. There are people that I know who have almost a competitive urge when it comes to when they hear divine truth. Isn't that the case, Stalin? Like, 
they were almost like, I'm going to do this as fast as possible and I'm going to be faster than anybody else and it's going to work great. And those kind of people never get to release anything because none of it's sincere. None of the work they do is sincere. They get overcloaked by spirits as a result and before they know it, all, lots of things happen. Now, for the majority of people who begin this process, this is what actually happens. They start working on emotion that they believe is their own emotion. So this is the start. They believe their own, is their own emotion, but it's actually the emotion of spirits with them who are feeding their addictions. Then they get to a point where they realise that's what's happening. That they have to be far more real than what they thought they were being up until that point. And then they actually do start addressing and reducing the amount of emotions inside of their soul. However, a lot of people at that point have this thing happening. They get angry, resistive, that they have to do it. You know, I don't want to have to do this. This is all bad. And, and then they go through moments where they do do it and release something. But then they get angry again. And then, you know, and, and they make choices and decisions in their anger. Just as you're making a choice and decision right now to be angry with me, even though you don't realize it. And, and those decisions are harming your, the love that could come out of you. They're harming it. They're, they're affecting it. Whereas if we chose to not do that and we instead just chose to have this slow release of emotion that is the true causal emotion without having our addictions for pleasure being met but rather focusing completely on, sincere, on the sincere addressing of particular things rather than forcing ourselves through it, what we would finish up doing is releasing stuff and we'll get to a better place in the end much more rapidly than we do it any other way. So what I would suggest to you is this. Look at why you are wanting to be so hard on yourself. Because you do want to be hard on yourself. And look at why. There's a reason why you want to be hard on yourself. And for, for the majority of people who are hard on themselves, the fear is so big that they want to just push their way through it rather than feel it. In other words, they want to get over it fast rather than just feel it. So my suggestion to you is let yourself look at why you're being hard on yourself and pushing yourself through things and instead allow yourself to feel what the underlying reason is as to why you're hard on yourself. Right? And you'll find that there's fears that need to be released there. And this is basically the process I'm recommending is this. Here's the grief at the bottom. That's what you eventually will feel. Over the top of the grief is the fear. And over the top of the fear are all of your addictions. And when they don't get met, you get angry. All right? That's the general train of emotion. You've seen me draw that many times before, probably, if you've watched some of the videos. Now... Every single time, if you remember this process, you realise that every single time I try to skip over one and go to another, in other words, many of us try to do this, we try to go, I want to get to my grief. And I'm not going to bother about my addictions or my fears, I'm going to get to my grief. And I try to force myself to get to my grief, whatever that grief might be, that I know is present within me, many of us can feel it. What we're doing is we're not releasing the things that keep that grief under control. And so it's going to be a terrible struggle with a lot of pain. If the way we do it instead is if we're angry, we feel the addiction that drove the anger. In other words, feel the next layer down. Don't try to go to the end. Feel the next layer down. Feel the addiction. So I go, oh yes... This addiction is that I want people to tell me that everything's going good and I'm going great and that's my addiction. Feel that addiction and feel how off it is. Feel how it creates a lot of things in your life. Feel how it manipulates people in order to give, get you feelings. Feel all of those kind of things. And once you feel it, you won't like it. And then what you'll do is go and say, okay, I want to feel the fear that drives this addiction. And it's the fear that I'm never going to be loved or the fear that I'm useless or worthless or the fear, you know, there's all sorts of fears that may be. And then allow yourself to feel those fears and you'll very rapidly get to the grief. 
but you are not going to get it by trying to skip over everything. All right? Now, when you force yourself, that's what you're doing. You're skipping over the process that God's created for you to release. Remember, this was the layers that were constructed. So the layers have to be deconstructed in the opposite order they were constructed. And for many of us, what we try to do is we skip over the layers we don't like. Now, most men don't like that. So they use all sorts of techniques to skip over that. Grief. Most women don't like that. So they use all sorts of techniques to get over that. Or over their fear. And as a result, we can't get to the bottom of everything. And it takes a much longer time. And in fact, for many people, they just give up as a result. Because they feel the pain of not getting through things. And they feel like it's just going on for weeks and then months and then years and then years and years. And, and after a while, they feel despondent and they give up. Uh, my suggestion, if you feel like that, is you need to reverse everything and go back to the basics, which is, I'm angry, and that's okay. I'm allowed to feel my anger, but understand that my anger covers my addictions. So there's addictions right now that are not being met that I need to let myself feel about and find out what they are and feel them. Feel how much I want them met. Feel how much I desperately need them. And this is the area where spirits feed us. So a spirit who's an unseen person and people on earth feed those, P-E-A is not a very good spelling of people, people on earth feed these addictions. Right? And that's how they get their addictions met, by feeding your addictions. And you go, oh, you're a wonderful person, and then they get their addictions met. Right? It's a codependent addiction fest. Right, that's basically what it is. And what we need to do is see that every time we're fed some things that we think are true and we act upon that in our addiction and the end result is not very happy, we need to see that this is what was the beginning. The beginning of it was that we were unwilling to see the addiction in play. And the event now, now that the event has happened, gives us the ability to see the addiction in play. So I would go back over the life of the, you asked me a question about your life in the last six months and what happened in the last six months. I would go back over my life, if it was me, looking at your situation, I'd go back over my life and I'd sit down and I'd write down all the addictions that got met when I was initially told these things that I thought were good. Does that make sense? And I would write every one of them down and I would look at them really seriously about feeling them rather than trying to have somebody come and tell me something and me accept it so readily. There are many people on the planet today that are complete, and in the spirit world, I'm talking about as well, who are completely willing to feed you a heap of bullshit, right? just a heap of crap, so that they get what they want out of you. That's... In fact, if you think about the world generally, it's pretty much how the world operates, isn't it, almost? And we are so used to accepting it because we want it. That's our problem. And this is where our addictions are so important. So I would suggest to you that this is the area to focus. Not so much on these areas, but this area here. That's the area I would focus on if I was you. And I would look at all the messages that you thought were good that you received over the last six months, and, and I would look at what addictions these particular messages fed, what kind of things that you liked about them, what did you get out of them when you received these particular messages, whether they're from spirits or people on earth, doesn't matter, and let yourself feel about what was driving it inside of yourself. That's what I would do. Yep. We can go back. <clears throat> 